What's up, guys? It's Brian from Hashware Hub. It's about 8.45 a.m. March 29, 2018, and we got a brand new trading video coming to you. If you're new to us, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, uh, upvote, re-steam, and also subscribe to us on DTube and Steam it, um, if you would be so kind. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of extraneous noises in the back uh, background today because we have some construction going on here, so my apologies ahead of time. But um, I want to bring up uh, two comments. One, somebody had given me a little home remedy for a cold. Um, I thank you very much for the, uh, the lemon juice and the uh, ACV, the apple cider vinegar. I'm a big fan of apple cider vinegar, um, but never had it with the lemon juice. I could just imagine how much worse it's going to make it taste. But maybe if it makes me feel better, uh, I'm all for it. So I'll try that this evening. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it there. The other one was that somebody was giving us a great comment on our on our uh, technical analysis and could not believe why we only have about uh, 4,700 subscribers. I think it's a little bit more than that. I think it's almost 48 right now. Uh, 4,800 right now. I have my theories. I have a few of them that are out there. Um, but uh, maybe you guys can help me out there. That would be, would be very appreciative. Um, uh, and it's really just very simple. Go down and you see that, that thumbs up button? Go down and just click that thumbs up button. If I even get uh, a major portion of you guys that are watching my videos click that thumbs up button, it's going to be greatly helpful for us because um, I believe the algorithms of YouTube pick that up and it then puts our videos in front of more people. And so that would be very, very much appreciative. Um, and probably going to be start talking about that. In other words, uh, how you guys can help us uh, more so in the future by uh, doing things like that, like liking the videos and stuff. So please take a second, go down below, hit that thumbs up button, and um, both you and I will feel good that we both did something good today. <laughs> anyway, so what we're looking at right now is Bitcoin, the Bitcoin on a four-hour chart. But what I want to do, do show here is uh, SPY. Um, this is uh, SPY, and I'm going to show you it to you on a daily basis. This is the SPY. It tracks the S&P 500 one for one. It's the ETF for the S&P 500. But we are sitting directly on, right now, the 200-day moving average. I mean, boom, right on it, right? The first, we had sit, sat on it one time before here, and we're also sitting on it right here. So I always said I wanted to incorporate some more uh you know technical analysis on the traditional markets unfortunately i just have yet to find the time just yet although i do trade the traditional markets as well um i just don't really have time for that many more videos so uh, but i'm i'm trying to find the time and kind of kind of pushing things around on scheduling and and stuff like that so um yes so yeah i mean if you guys are involved in in uh in the traditional markets yeah just just beware um next bitcoin so when we were talking last night, and I'm going to pull up on an hour basis chart right now. We were talking last night. We were talking right about here, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we saw that this wedge was right here. And like I said, we were not just going to sneak out the back door with this thing uh, by just going sideways. I, I was very I was pretty confident in, in, in that. Um, and, um, and uh, yeah, so what had happened, we had tested this, this trend line right here. And then we broke right down below it. So this is a textbook trade setup. Um, that I had mentioned to you guys many, many times before. You know, it's these trend lines. You know, some people kind of make fun of me sometimes for drawing these trend lines and stuff like that. But, you know, they say, oh, you can, you can draw random lines. Um, anybody could draw land random lines. Yeah, okay, great. But, I mean, it, it depends on if you can trade based on them. And, and this is clearly a line that you could trade, you could trade on. Uh, the market was trading on it. And so this is clearly a textbook setup. As far as trading is concerned from a short, you can do it from an aggressive basis right along here. You can do it for a more conservative basis, taking this swing low uh, right about here, and we should leave it right here. So um, kind of a thought uh, was, was this, last night, this last night where we were thinking that we were going to get a fifth wave down, and it's from the larger one, two, three, four, five. So in other words, this would be three, this would be four, and then this would be five. So if that's the case, and this is five waves down right here, then this ABC is not is not um, is not viable really anymore. Okay. So, <clears throat> and that's what happens with Elliott wave theory, right? So, you think something is going to happen, or you think something is happening, right? But you keep your mind open for other possibilities, and and looking and looking at things in, in order to trade. And when, when the market goes in a certain area, you can go ahead and you can rule things out. So now I do believe really that this is the four, um, as I had postulated last night, that this is the four 
of, of the one, two, three, four, sorry, one, one, two, three, four, and then we'd have a five. Now the question becomes, uh, did we have, do, is this five complete, right? So we would, the four is just a simple A, B, and a C. So it's, this would be one, two, three, and then we may possibly have a four and then a five, right? This is the subwaves of the fifth wave right here. So let's just do something as far as Fibonacci extension is concerned and pull this up. All right? So um, <clears throat> the one-to-one, -one, as far as the third, the third wave is concerned, the one-to-one, -one, we blasted right through it. We stopped at the 1.618. We basically stopped right on it, tried to get it back above above it, and continue pay possibly its fourth wave. But then the market said no, and it kind of sold off even more. We had a fair amount of volume coming in here for the sell side. Okay, now we're seeing some buy volume coming in uh, to the buy side, trying to protect this. Okay. Um, what I will mention and things that I take a look at quite a bit is, uh, so I say I, I take a look at, at, at this uh, candle right here. Right, this candle is almost a doji-like candle. The volume is not necessarily super low right but the, it, did, it didn't really do very much right and then we have this one this one and this one right so these two at the very least the bodies are much larger than this is right here right <clears throat> um and then this one right here you know the volume is approximately like this one is here and then so now i'm thinking that possibly this could be kind of the end of the um end of the third wave okay and that we would have a fourth wave coming up, okay? And maybe a small fifth wave coming back down. This is the subwaves of the fifth wave, okay? And then possibly that fifth wave would come down and hit the, the 2.618, okay? That is um, um, uh, definitely a, a, a high possibility. Um, so that's, that's the way we're counting things right now. Next, I want to show... Uh, what's going on on the different on the different markets, right? So remember the red line is right here. We're still a bit a bit away, um, but look, let's see what's going on on Bitfinex. On Bitfinex, we're basically right on top of the red line. On BTC, uh, excuse me, on, B, on Coinbase, we're, we're just below the red line. So um, it's going to be a mixed bag as far as the market reaction here, um, as far as what. Uh, what what could possibly happen i do believe that there is a ton of orders right here okay right at this 7400 level actually to be exact i believe that there are a lot of orders okay because it's slightly above here first of all second of all it's a nice number 7400 just has a nice ring to it okay so um oh yeah another thing i want to mention too is the unbalanced volume um unbalanced volume um remember i said here I had that uh, that dumb comment. I forgot exactly how it went, but it's something. It's going to do something or whatever, something like that. Uh, something really dumb like that. But um, uh, yes, I mean my my, my idea was. Um, uh, I think I tried to clean that statement up afterwards. But my idea was was that uh, basically, yeah. I mean it's going to fall off or it's going to rise up, you know, and it's going to happen on on balance volume too. Okay, and that's exactly what happened. Um, and so on balance volume, you know, you could even see, um, you know, uh, the way this was drawn, right? So you could see, uh, it's, it's hard to see. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see it. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we have this candle right here, right? So this candle right here uh, on the on balance volume breached more so than it breached the line right here the support line right here right so this is very telling information when you're going about trading okay it's telling you tell, telling you volume is voting in this direction in other words sentiment is voting in this direction and yes even small little things like this mean a lot all right um <clears throat> I want to show you guys something else. What was it? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, okay. Death cross update. <laughs> I don't mean like an evil laugh there. I swear. Um, okay. Yes. So here we are on this death cross. Okay. I'm. 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 Looking at it as a 200 moving average, 55 uh, EMA, right? But, you know, traditionally people look at it as a 50 uh, moving average. Um, but 
you know, uh, I use what the market seems to be seems to be uh, working off of, and at least on the one hour basis, you know, the 50 is 55. Uh, EMA is you know all over the is is basically nailing the, the most recent uh, price action, especially on on 30 minute, right? I mean, it's like all over here, right? So um, <clears throat> another thing I want to mention is it's a little bit clearer on a 30 minute basis. But remember, we were talking about this one hour resistance level, which I said it's not really resistance, it's not really support, it's somewhere in between. It's kind of like a shish kebab through the market, right? Which we had drawn a long time ago. And you could see here, okay, um, is that we kept on trying to test this one hour resistance, right? Kept trying to test this one hour resistance. The market fell back down again, right? After it had been down for so long, right? So the market acts on, on support and resistance lines like a jackhammer exactly the t same type of jackhammer you probably hear working in here right now um and it it uh the more it beats away at it the more likely it is to break it um excuse me sorry I'm trying to blow my nose here so yeah the more it, it it pounds away at it the more likely it's going to break at it break at break it at least in my experience so and that's what that's exactly what happens here um on the one hour basis i mean you could even see like laguerre right so let's let's take a look at things at laguerre so laguerre even turned around right laguerre is great for timing so it you know it told you basically to short here the market went sideways right it told you to go long here right but you, again, you have to think of these things in terms of, in, 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 con, in context of everything else. Remember, as I always say, and I probably haven't said it for some time, but I used to say it a lot in the beginning, use these indicators to paint a story for you. So Laguerre keeps on like, like ratcheting up, trying to ratchet up, right? But the market keeps getting rejected by this resistance line right here. Again, that's why I left the resistance line on, right? It wasn't until here, right? where Laguerre started coming back off again, right? So you did see it starting to become become negative or go in that negative uh, uh, negative uh, direction again. Let's take a look at, let's take a look, but you'd also have at the same time, you also have what's going on with on balance vo volume. But let's take a look at, we'll see what actually happened with the normal RSI, okay? The normal RSI, because I know a lot of people just like the normal RSI. Um, <clears throat> um, but look what we have here, okay? So, okay? And it matches up here and here. It matches up exactly what's going on with the market, right? So, that is also very telling. And let's look at it bar by bar, right? So, you have kind of like this, this double top almost, right? Here and here, right? And it fell off here and here. And then it fell off here, and then it fell off here, right? So you could see clearly that, and if you wanted to go ahead and draw a bottom trend line right here, right? And again, you have a triangle, right? And this is something I didn't show you guys last night, but I mean, this is you know what I do all day long for for trading. I mean, that's just that's just the way the way it works. Um, at least for me, that's the way it works. Everybody has to find their own way, but for me, this is the way it works. So that's why I make videos on it, because I feel like other people uh, would like to hear it. <laughs> um, so you could even see here, the market, as far as the RSI is concerned, it, it, it hit the line, it tried to get back above it, and then it fell down below it, right here, right? And then we had the, the large capitulation that came, came down from there, okay? So a lot of signals for, 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 for why this was going to happen or when it was going to happen. And again, you know, I can't, I can't make videos on the spot. I mean, uh, you know, I was most likely sleeping at this time right mm -hmm. here uh, with the amount of NyQuil that I took last night. I probably was completely passed out. But, um, you, uh, you know, if you were watching it, you should watch out. For, for, for things like this, these small little divergences mean a lot, especially when it's right around uh, trend line. So let's go ahead and, um, oh, we were talking about the, the, the death cross, right? How did we even get there? I don't even know. Let's see. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so we're close, right? So maybe another day or two, if we continue going in that direction, then yeah, it could possibly cross over. Remember, go to my video last night, okay? It's not really the 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 the, the end of the world. Um, yes, it's not necessarily a great thing. I mean, the last time it happened, we basically went slightly down to sideways for I think it was like a year, a year and a quarter. We we calculated last night. So. Um, yeah, but then look where we look look where we got to from there, right? And that's part of part of corrections. Um, that's just part of the way things go. But at the same time, we're not exactly in the same place where uh, the death course happened last. But the market has sold off here much more than it has sold off um, in the in the prior correction in Bitcoin um, than, than than versus when the when the uh, the death cross happened. So um, you can go go take a look at that on that video. So. Um, on yesterday's video. Oh, and be sure to like that one too, please. So now let's go. Let's let's get into some uh, resistance level on a daily basis. We're gonna call this 8,907. Okay, that's where it is right now. But we were thinking it may be updated. It's probably not gonna be updated right now. Um, we'll see what happens tonight. Um, let's look at things on a one-hour resistance uh, basis. So one-hour resistance basis. We're looking at things at 7,680. 7,680. 7,680. So, um, and the four hour, oh, the four hour resistance, 7,802. So this fell off quite a bit. Seven thousand eight hundred and two. So, um, fair amount of resistance in order for the market to come through here, uh, in order to possibly start making a you know a one two three four five coming up, right? The four hour resistance line and the one hour resistance line. You know they I would say a good 80, 80 90 percent of the time um, they are in effect. Um, maybe not completely as resistance but the market if it shoots right through it more times than not like i would say a good oh man it's got to be a good 70 80 percent of the time the market then comes back down again to retest that retest that level okay um you know that's the whole pendulum thing about the market the market can run in a particular direction then it's like oh man what happened back there i totally forgot i got to go back and see what happened right there make sure everything's cool make sure everybody's all right i didn't offend anybody and then i'm on solid foundation to move forward right and that's kind of the way in which it works from a from a psychological perspective i guess right so um yeah that's really about it for right now so let's let's see if we get kind of a on, on, the, on the micro basis here a fourth wave coming up and then a fifth wave uh coming coming down uh, and then maybe that may get us possibly get us to this line right here it would probably have to be some sort of extended fifth um, and then we would see what's going on from there so have a great day and happy trading